Okay, so today I'm going to discuss something about remaining celibate in mind. So one barrier we have crossed, remaining celibate externally, that we are doing. What well, about mind? That's more important now. Because after all, everything is here in this box. This matters. And what you have here, that's what you perceive. And that's what you give others. So, how to do that? What are the some important points we should keep in mind to be celibate? Otherwise, we become hypocrite after some time. That happens in Brahmacharya life. Uh, of course, everybody's mind is disturbed. It's natural. It's nothing unusual. But after some time, if we don't, we are not careful. It keeps on going, 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 running here and there. And then, after some time, we start getting disturbed. We start feeling we are hypocrites. No, after some time, and then, uh, and then there is need to marry. So, celibates do not monks. Like all brahmacharis, we do not marry because of many brahmacharis do not marry because of uh, because of because of really they are like super lusty. It's not like that. There are two factors just for marriage. One is because they now start feeling we are hypocrites, and that's not a good feeling. No, you start feeling guilty. I've seen many devotees. They they can remain celibate. They can, but this feeling of hypocrite. That doesn't allow them to go along. So that's very important. We should we should get we should not we should prepare ourselves so that we don't land in that situation. And the second factor is loneliness. Many devotees do not marry because of lust or hypocrisy, but due to loneliness. You know, you are alone. I mean, we are together, but still we are alone. No? Like we don't have anybody to emotional exchange, you know. Like householders have their wife in the night, they might demand with their wife and talking something. But we don't have. So, due to these two factors, everybody who is married, like there was one disciple of, um, I, I'll not name him, but he, he was about to take sannyas and he was like aged person. So, uh, he was about to take sannyas and uh, so, um, uh, so yeah, yeah. He was a disciple of Loknath Maharaj. He told him, "Okay, you take sannyas." So, okay, fine. Everything was set. And then I think after a week, he had sannyas initiation. But then, just before that day, initiation day, he went to meet Maharaj, and he had a wife with him. So the next day, instead of sannyas initiation, he had marriage. <laughs> so no, no, no. Same thing. The day before? Yeah, day before. Why? Because he started fearing loneliness. <clears throat> that fear came, you know, my God, entire life I have to be alone. What should I do now? And that's a pretty weird feeling. People can't come out of it. I, I, all of the sannyasis who have fallen down in our movement, we know history, no? Let's face it, we can't hide it. Uh, it's not anybody can fall down. I, I, we don't we don't demean them that they've fallen down. Maya is strong. They have done great service to Prabhupada. We respect them, but they fell down. What can we learn from them? That's the idea. In Bhagavatam also we have incidences: Brahma falling down, you know, running after her daughter. Mm. That's a pretty weird thing. Sukhdev Goswami. Uh, he spoke to Parikshit Maharaj this incident. He revealed this uh, and he was not ashamed. He could have hidden this fact, no, about Brahma. It's a big thing to tell everybody, to announce everybody. See, guys, Brahma did <laughs> Brahma, he was running after daughter. Nobody's going to do that normally. But he did that uh, because, not because he wanted to condescend or blaspheme Brahma, but he wanted to let us know, learn from this. Illusion is strong. So that's the idea. So many uh, sannyasis who fell down, who were in GVC or whatever, you all know. You all know so many incidences. Why? Primary reason was, one of the reasons was loneliness. Because you're preaching, 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 and then you start feeling. You, you're not in connection with anybody. And you're sannyasi, no? Sannyasi means you're there. And people like us, we are here, you know? <laughs> There's a gap. 
so they can't really so it's a big thing <clears throat> so we should not land ourselves in those kind of situations and for that we have to be celibate in mind how to prepare ourselves that's what i'm going to talk here okay first step is do not always think i will not marry that's the first advice <laughs> don't always keep on thinking i will not marry it'll not work that's chanakya pandit's advice if a brahmachari keeps on thinking i'll not marry he'll be the first person to marry <laughs> because anyway you're thinking of marriage no positive or negative i'll not marry i'll not marry mm-hmm. i'll not marry i'll not marry this this mataji is not good mataji is not good mataji is not good. mataji 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 okay yeah she is good something is good <laughs> something is good <laughs> and this happens so don't always think i'll not marry it's not a good idea so what to do the idea is to forget marriage and not suppress marriage thoughts of marriage you to forget it not suppress suppress doesn't work you to forget and that's the idea mentioned in chetanya charitamrita uh, chetanya mahaprabhu says that when you when you absorb yourself in krishna consciousness you will forget your body krishna smaran jar deha smaran nahi yar so prabhupad's advice was prabhupad again and again is writing in his letters absorb yourself in krishna consciousness absorb you will forget all these concepts of marriage and no marriage we are not dealing with both of them neither marry neither no marry forget the concept of marriage altogether and that will happen when we absorb ourselves so the question is how to absorb ourselves no that's a question what to do and prabhupad always said in his letters conversations in his books be busy be busy that's the third be busy now how to be busy that's the point you know how to be busy should we just keep on running here and there spend the energy and then <laughs> drop that no there are three things you should keep in mind how to be busy this is all from prabhupad the ne- nectar of devotion prabhupad mentions plan planning first is planning plan what you have to do just like business people you know there's a planner short term plan long term plan mid term plan immediate plan urgent plan everything should be planned because if you're not planned your mind will become space out you no know, as soon as you'll get time empty mind is devil's mind yeah so so you have to plan you sh- it sh- everything should be charted out okay what is my one month plan one week plan one year plan lifelong plan immediate plan short term plan all these things you should write it just write it it might take some kind of taxation on your mind but you should write it how much you can write everything you don't know no? lifelong plan what you you don't know but it should be on your chart leave it empty whenever you see again and again you will have a desire okay fine i should have a long term plan no it will come there after some time krishna will fill fill it for you but you have to keep it a blank there for krishna to fill it for you if you don't have a blank if you don't have a concept of long term plan there is nothing no so there is a long term plan for example i'll give you example like myself for me long term plan is uh, like long term is lifelong plan is scientific preaching i want to do that for outside people for helping outside people for serving them for serving devotees my lifelong plan is to Uh, to systematize knowledge because in iskon we don't get systematic knowledge we have knowledge but we don't have systematic knowledge that's what i want to contribute to prabhupad uh, take prabhupad books put it systematic way and then give to people so that's my long term plan uh, for example and maybe um, immediate plan is okay denver one week <laughs> that's immediate plan uh, i am here to serve you all and maybe what whatever i can and then uh uh and then one okay fine one month plan i have in mind that i have to complete a book i'm completing a book on prabhupada teachings shila prabhupada teaching simple yet deep i have that in mind <clears throat> and uh two months plan i have to complete as two science books i have to do that so see i'm busy in mind that's i'm in mind i'm busy you have to keep your mind busy if mind doesn't have plans you're not busy that's prabhupada says in bhagavad gita purport because of lack of goal we fall in illusion 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So plan. That's okay. And then work hard. To keep busy, work hard. Now, what do you mean by work hard? Uh, Prabhupada always says, work hard, no? In his letters, okay, work hard for Krishna. Work hard for Krishna. Now, working hard for Krishna is is um, is taxing yourself a little bit. Going a little beyond your limits, no? That's working hard. You might feel, you know, that I'm going beyond my limit. That's okay. You have to little stretch yourself. That's fine. You do work hard. If you don't work hard for Krishna, you will have to work hard for your wife. You have to choose, no? <laughs> there, there was one, one Prabhupada disciple, Atman's Prabhu. He said to me, you know, like, he's Prabhupada disciple, so I was talking to him. So, uh, he now he's married. So, many, many years he didn't marry. So, he told me, see, when I was full-time, I was, I was okay, you know, I was chanting and doing so much stuff, and that's okay. But after marriage, uh, you know, I have to carry bucket for her, for water bucket from first floor to fourth floor. <laughs> because she's shouting. <laughs> so she, he told, I didn't work hard for Krishna. So Krishna made me work hard for my wife. He'll force you. So anyway, you have to work hard. Either there or here. You can't escape that. So better we... It makes sense, no? And people go out and finance... With wife, with woman, everything comes. Woman comes, finance, house. Griha Sutapta, what's that verse? Griha Shetra Sutapta Vittai. Pulat Maharaj. With female comes house. First thing, you know, as soon as you think of marriage, I want a house, no? <laughs> and then finance, then children, then it's, it's, a, it's a messed up life. <laughs> yeah, you end up wasting time. But you know one thing: in America, there is a misconception. I've been traveling to all places, and people are telling me, you know, Brahmacharis, Prabhu, I'm going to get married. I thought, okay. And the next statement, what they say, shocked me. They say, everybody of them, almost hundred percent, they said, Prabhu, I'm so fortunate to get a good Mataji devotee. <laughs> and other grastas, they encourage. Okay, nice. You're marrying and you got a nice, good wife, good devotee wife. You're fortunate. That's okay, but at the same time, you have to understand you're fallen. You know, Chaitanya Charitamrita says that, see, as a brahmachari, we have to keep this in mind, no? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, a snake, even if it becomes a devotee, it's a snake. Understand what I'm saying? So, woman, even if she becomes devotee, she's a woman. And women are different species. They are not same species. Keep in mind, women are complex. They are complex. Isn't it? You might have some experience. You, yes, Alipet. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Women are really complex if you deal with them. I mean, you may not realize now, but, but they are there. They are really out. So, I'll tell how to deal with them. That's important. But you should never be illusioned that this Mataji is, is, uh, that she's a woman, she's a devotee, no problem. She's a good devotee, but anyway she's a woman, no. And we are men. Both can't come together. You understand, that's the point. Women are more emotional, that's the point. They're more emotional. And they tend to seek security. Security. That's in nature. It's not bad, that's in nature. But that nature can make us fall down. That kind of nature. If we associate with that, so we have to be careful in that regard. Uh, so, and that's why Bhagavatam speaks about women, no? So much. We've heard, we've read Bhagavatam. So, so much about women. Woman has the sweet words, but razor like sharp heart, no? It's all, it's all there. Uh, it doesn't mean that we hate them. Just means we have to be careful because just like fire and butter, Narad Muni says, that's in nature. If butter comes near fire, it will melt. So there are chances that we'll get, we'll become trapped by that. So, yeah. Why I'm saying this, work hard. Oh yeah, work hard. I'm talking about woman. I just skipped there. Okay, fine. So work hard for Krishna. 
otherwise we'll have to work hard for a female it, it, it's not a good idea and the third point is set goals set goals in your life if you don't set goals in your life like goals means planning and goal is different you plan okay lifelong i'll do this i'll do that urgent plan immediate plan all these things but goal is something different goal is how should i serve mission of prabhupad that's one goal and within that goal you have to plan you understand that's so how should i serve mission of prabhupad okay these are my plans how should i serve community congregation for example these are my plans how should i serve common public these are my plans so you understand goals and plans are different all these three has to be there then your mind intelligence and body everything will be busy busy it's not as body we have to keep busy you know that's what I, this mind so intelligence needs planning intelligence plans no decision so charting plan will engage your intelligence working hard will engage your body setting goals will engage your mind because mind wants to desire no this goal that goal fantasy so both three things that's why i put three things mind intelligence body everything has to be put in service of krishna but krishna says in gita even one sense is which is not engaged in my service he says no one roaming sense is not engaged in my service can lead fall down even most intelligent person he'll fall down okay so sometimes we don't want to be busy no we don't want no we have heard we used to be busy but mind will say come on leave it i'm tired people know but they don't want so how to force ourselves to keep us busy we have to force ourselves take risk prabhupas always said take risk in service of krishna prabhupat to risk is it prabhupat to risk so you'll be forced you'll be forced to to do all these things so how to take risk by setting high goals to set high goals in your life by planning uh, yeah high level planning like that high goals should be set like prabhupad set a goal okay i'll preach in america that's a big goal at least if you if you see prabhupad he's he's from bengal this is a bengali person and a cult you know bengali cult and he's trying to take that cult in america where nobody even knows krishna it's a big thing no i i was hearing prabhupad's lecture and prabhupad was saying that oh prabhupad in lecture he was saying so take to this cult and i was imagining you know how americans might be hearing that <laughs> at that time because cult is a big word here no it's like a bad word cult and prabhupad was saying in his lecture again and again so i was wondering you know uh, yeah uh, so i didn't check which year he was speaking probably it was initial days of iskon so prabhupad really was trying to figure out how these people think what should i do what should i speak or not so that's the cult word but he had a goal very high goal and he knew that it's almost impossible but he did it no krishna was with him so but the point is again and again prabhupada letters he is saying take risk for krishna you have read this no do you read letters of prabhupada yeah. all of you regularly you read regularly no regularly oh okay it's my kartik kartik oh, oh you're reading letters shikshamrita yeah. yeah letters are if you want to get mood that's there in letters so yeah books also have mood but letters are intense because prabhupada is instructing no so letter but letters is like there are two things in letters one is specific instructions to that person you have to be careful that that contextual and one are general instructions like he just says like when mata ji asks how to take care of tulsi so he's saying he's saying to mata ji okay god you should take care like you, you should do in that temple you should do this but then he gives a list how to take care of tulsi in summer you don't this so that general instruction so that those things we can take you know contextual things it's difficult to understand you always need devotees and it's intense so in that letters prabhupada is always saying take risk prabhupada is saying like i mean to say hamsa dut prabhu maharaj i think he was saying he went to saudi arab for preaching 
and Prabhupada, no, but we are, we are taking risk for Krishna, you are putting it, it's, for, it's risk for life, no? Prabhupada was happy, Prabhupada was saying, yes, Krishna will have mercy on you. Tamal Krishna Maharaj went to China, many people went to Africa. It was a risk of life, no? All of them. And Prabhupada was happy. So, how to do risk? Set high goals. Because if you don't make your life busy, we are going to fall down. It's impossible to get live a brahmacharya life. It's impossible. At least in this age. It's very difficult. So you have to force yourself. How to force yourself? By... Uh, the, uh, we have two systems of forcing ourselves. One, you force yourself, no? From inside, okay, from today I'll do this, do this, do this. But that will not work because after some time, it will again come down, no? So forcing yourself is by external force. You have to set high goals so that you... You have to dream, basically, that's all. You have to be a dreamer. Mm. <laughs> that's all. In simple words. Just like people dream, material word, I'll do this, I'll do this. So you have to dream. Be a dreamer. You can hallucinate also, no problem. <laughs> Maybe you can do it, but but it'll keep you engaged for your entire life. Maybe, maybe you can set a goal in three lives. I'll do this. What do you do? <laughs> then you'll be super engaged, you know. So uh, like this, I, it's not bad to dream. Something you have to dream, no. Either your fantasies or about Krishna, you can dream. Even if it doesn't fu- get fulfilled, you can dream. It's always dream. you can always dream. I dream. And that's how you, you, you fulfill your desire to dream, you know, also. <laughs> so, that's risk. But, if you set very high goals, and you're working very hard, we might tend to feel, my mind is not peaceful. No? Your mind will be busy. And you can become afraid. Is it? Mm-hmm. Just my mind is going like so, and when you're chanting, it's going... You're busy in your mind, no? So people, devotees get afraid that uh, it's not peaceful, I forget that, you know. Just I was in Cincinnati, so that devotees, I told them, see, you do programs here, it's a, such a nice a university, such a nice uni- university, and uh, people can come, you arrange programs, big, big programs, let people come, give them opportunity. So devotees were saying, Prabhu, no, let it be small, it disturbs the mind. <laughs> we want to chant peacefully. But the point is, point is, devotion is not peace. Devotion is love. And love is not peace. Love is, everything is not about peace. Peace is all not, jnanis. That's not devotion, no? Like Christ. He said to his apostles, go and preach. Sacrifice your life. He, he didn't say peace. He said love. Mm-hmm. Love demands risk. Love demands disturbance in mind. You have, that Prabhupada said, spiritual anxiety. So don't be disturbed, don't be afraid of no peace. Don't do that. We are not here for peace. We are here for love. Love. And the more you are disturbed for Krishna, the more you will start loving Him. Prabhupada called it as spiritual anxiety. Many devotees came to Prabhupada. And letters you read, they are writing, Prabhupada, I am disturbed. And this Prabhupada says, no, it is spiritual anxiety. <laughs> That's good. And scientifically also, it's, it, it is proved. There is something called stress. Negative stress and positive stress. You heard about that? Mm-hmm. So what's that all about? Negative stress is uh, when you're forced. Positive stress is when you're trying to fulfill your own dreams. So you're stressed, but it is you're ha- feeling happy in that stress because you're doing fulfilling your dreams. But negative stress is an office. Maybe you're fo- you don't want to do. So when you don't want to do and you're stressed, that's negative stress. When you want to do and that's stress, that's positive stress. All scientific research, this says, positive stress makes you more healthy. So it's scientific also research. And Rupa said always, that's spiritual anxiety. So good, if you have anxiety, that's very nice. <laughs> it's very nice. Uh, because you are anxious for Krishna. Just like a mother is, mother, father anxious for child. You are anxious for Krishna. That will develop love. love. Otherwise, we'll peacefully fall down. <laughs> that's, that's said in Brahmacharya life. <laughs> it's, a, it's a statement. You peacefully fall down. 
doesn't work like that. And that's the problem with the movement today. Prabhupada left and the force is not there, no? Prabhupada was pushing, no? Do this, do that, do this. And, and then devotees of Prabhupada, we can't do. Prabhupada said, you have to do. Is it? In LA that happened, no? That this, they were printing Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, you know that story. And Prabhupada said, they said, it's impossible. And Prabhupada said, no, you have to do. It's my order. And then they were like running. <laughs> Prabhupada, Prabhupada knew exactly what to do with us. He pushed us. But now, times have changed, you know, like, it has changed. Um, on the pretext that uh, we have to boil down the milk, that's one pretext, but, well, if you have to boil down the milk, boil down the milk means you have to make devotees mature. Maturity comes by, what is maturity? You love Krishna? No. The more you love Krishna, the more mature you are. And that's how we do so, uh, yeah, not be afraid. Spiritual anxiety, good. Good. And, yeah, but the point is, no peace, that's okay. We are, spiritual, we are having spiritual anxiety. But in that spiritual anxiety, there's happiness. Find happiness in service. Is it? So that externally it is spiritual anxiety, but internally that's happiness. Because when you're anxious for God, you're happy, no? So how do you... How to logically understand that? Prabhupada said you can't understand. You can't understand. It's not logic. By heart, you can understand that. You have to feel. It's not logic. So no mother who is always thinking of a child, small baby, is always crying, always problem, no? Small babies. Parents are always in anxiety. If you ask them, are you happy? Super happy, no? <laughs> is it? All parents are happy. Although the child is like always disturbing them. It will not even allow them to sleep at night. Are they happy? Because it's the child. So it's our Krishna. We are working for him. We, are ang- we have spiritual anxiety. We are happy. No. So only people, who, only servants can know this. Scholars cannot understand that. Jnanis cannot understand that. This is... Ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the most confidential knowledge. The most confidential knowledge. That's why it's most confidential. It is there, but by logic we can't understand. Only servants can understand by practicing. And uh, okay, find happiness in service. So that's important. Be happy in service. And uh, find the happiness in service of God. You have to also find happiness with devotees. So make friends. Have friends. That's very important devotional life. If you don't have friends, then it's difficult to go on. I, that loneliness, I was talking about that. So you, everybody should have friends, some good friends. In Krishna, uh, Krishna, of course, devotee friends. No, Devotee friends. One, two, that's okay. With everybody, your frequency will not match. Is it? It's not possible. It's humanly impossible. That's okay. Everybody's different. But some friends should be there whom you can discuss your like Rupa Goswami says, Guya Makhati Prachati, whom you can discuss your your secrets or your whatever, your emotions, you can exchange your emotions, you can laugh, you can cry, whatever. Somebody should be there. Spiritual master uh, is a best friend, but we don't have much contact with spiritual master, no? In his institution, life, we don't have much, because he has other duties also, no? So many disciples, so, but, so that's why we should have a friend who is like our level so that we can freely talk. And Bhagavatam says that uh, what's that verse? Puja Maitri Kripa Upeksha Every devotee should worship Lord make friends with his equals have mercy on the ignorant and Upeksha avoid atheists. So make friends with equals uh, and Worship Lord and worship Lord includes also advanced devotees. God is not, Krishna is not without devotees. So spiritual master, we worship them. We take crucial advices. Everybody wants advice, everybody wants guidance. But everybody also needs friends, equal friends. That's okay. So uh, have friends. But nevertheless, still, even if you have friends, you are alone. 
full time life means you are alone you have to keep in mind till that you are alone so use that loneliness in service of god that's the idea krishna consciousness is using everything for krishna no so to use that loneliness how you should use that loneliness any idea how you should do that feel greater dependence on krishna. okay good yeah use that loneliness when you're lonely you feel you don't feel good use that feeling to pray to krishna oh krishna i'm lonely in this world please accept me as your servant you are my best friend i rely upon you please keep me near you there's nobody in my life only you are there like that so you feel the necessity of god no of krishna in your life the householders they can't pray as intensely as we can because when they're lonely their emotions can get satisfied no by the children by the wife but there's a great opportunity in full time life you can use loneliness to intensify your prayers hmm? and uh, and if you're lonely then there is always tendency to get rid of this loneliness by talking to mata ji and that happens by reflex it's subconscious no we don't we don't know but sometimes we start talking to mata ji is more often than not required and you don't understand why but it happens so talk needful to mata ji just needful don't talk extra don't talk less you have to talk they are after all they are they are living entities that's okay their nature is different that's fine but they are vaishnavis no is not that they are not devotees we are not devotees <laughs> they are devotees we should consider ourselves devotees so we yeah, are but talk needful just like a child you know a child is a devotee we understand but you, you avoid him he's like he likes messing up everything no it's not out of hate but that's practical you know you avoid that child you know if you bring a baby here you can't do a class <laughs> so that's like mata ji you know talk needful and there is this is very important because in pujari room in dt kitchen you, we are interacting no very intimately that's two places dt kitchen and pujari room these are two places where brahmacharis fall down that's the most dangerous place <laughs> place i am yeah, in mayapur you see pankajangri prabhu you know pankajangri prabhu no what happened like so that happened like he was in pujari room and the mata ji and so they happened so and that's always in pujari room is a dangerous room although there's krishna there you know <laughs> but uh, and kitchen also because so yeah no problem we are not fearful no some brahmacharis are fearful mata ji uh, alarm ting and they're running away it happens in india no it happens in india of course you're not running away and you're not talking both things are bad now if you're running away also then that's also bad vitaraga bhaya krodha you should be atta- devoid of attachment devoid of fear both because both can catch you so no problem normal but talk needful and this is advice of scriptures never ever take any favor from any mata ji don't take any favor that's advised of all dharma shastras because once you take favor from any mata ji you might forget but they'll not forget they'll never forget and their, their their mind works in a different way you know if you take a favor then they might think okay fine he likes me or whatever i don't know but the mind is different and never give any favor to them don't do both don't do both if they ask something what is needful do that this i'm saying don't go out go out of way to take any favor no go out out of your way to give any favor to the needful that's okay by the same time look upon them as another soul in service of god don't hate them that's many brahmacharis you know they become fanatic and they start mata ji is <laughs> it happened like at least in iskon movement you know initial days it happened like that you know when mata ji she came in bus party i think jaydev maharaj was telling she came in bus party and she she came inside then she went off 
one brahmachari took a bucket full of water and washed that place <laughs> it was like that in initial days it was very stupid they were new all of them so yeah that's it's like okay pretty cool you know that's okay whatever is required do that but don't go out of the way extra to take or give fine you get my point so little careful little careful we have to be okay uh do not be disturbed by disturbance mm-hmm. <laughs> that's because uh, naturally a mind get disturbed as brahmacharis there is always there's always a lust it's always there so yamnachare he said yamnachare big devotee he said no prabhupad quotes him that whenever i get lusty thoughts i spit on it no so the point is he is he's also he's he also getting those thoughts but he doesn't like them so there are many instances you get disturbed by these thoughts and maybe politics i know in this temple but it's always there if you have two people then there's politics <laughs> you can't avoid that if you have two bangles there should be sound that's what i'm saying so yeah there is that's okay that's a part of life uh, everybody has politics no their job they have politics everybody has politics in their home wife is thinking something you are thinking children maybe gross politics maybe subtle politics it's always they are pe- they are different people no problems don't be disturbed by disturbance disturbance as disturbance has come so shall it go that's all so how to do is do it is if your mind is disturbed you should think i'm not mind that's all that's what gita says what's that verse gita um higher than body's intelligence intelligence oh what's that verse remember what that you remember that sanskrit of that mm-hmm. indriyani parani ahur indriyavya paramana manasastu para buddhir uh, parasastu hi sah yeah that was higher than body's mind higher than mind intelligence higher than intelligence soul so we are not to fight with mind we have to understand we are not this mind if you fight with mind you're definitely going to lose because bhagavatam says mind is having god like power avatam says mind is having god like power you can't fight with it so just understand you are not this mind you know what if first of all mind is disturbing you and you get disturbed by disturbance of mind so you create more problems for yourself now is one disturbance another disturbance everything is disturbed so just mind is like a wife soul is like husband if wife gets disturbed what husband should do what it does mm. you know what happens in our soul life what husband does okay let us shout <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. every husband learns with time <laughs> in first you know this is on this but he knows you can't do anything you know so okay fine he compromises and let us shout that's okay she'll stop <laughs> you ask any husband any congregation everybody learns this by experience nobody shouts nobody controls her wife nobody shouts at her wife it's impossible the more you do the more situation worsens so first of all mind is disturbed mind is trying to disturb you and you get disturbed and everything gets spoiled so best is if somebody is disturbed how to control that disturbance you be peaceful no be peaceful he'll calm down otherwise if he becomes disturbed you become disturbed he becomes more disturbed and then things ex- escalate so when mind is disturbed be peaceful no you just think i am not mind let it think whatever it wants i am servant of god i am soul my job is to serve krishna you think whatever you want that's all that's the idea what bhagavatam is giving no is it brahma hamsa guya prayers that's all all about no so don't be disturbed by disturbance no problem just watch be a spectator don't get involved in that like parmatma upadrishta anumanta just watch what's, what's happening things will come and pass by and go pass by and go pass by and go that is what that krishna is helping us to understand this is word of dualities mind is happy disturbed happy okay just watch it be aloof things going going brahma bhuta prasanna atma 
and you do your work, serve God. And you are liberated, that's all, finish. That's the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita, Prambhuta Prasanatmana, Shoshati, Nakangshati. So, if you practice this, it will come. And then, never be depressed. Sometimes we get disturbed and become depressed, no? Is it? Sometimes we become depressed. Never be depressed in your life. Why? Tell me why. You have more potential to fall. Okay, that's obvious. But why you have potential to fall? When you worry, you make it double. Uh, I'm, got, I'm talking about depressed. I'm not talking about worry. This is a different thing, no? When, when you allow yourself to be depressed, it's because your focus is on you. I'm okay, not, uh, okay, fine. You can, you can say this, yeah. That's okay. Focus comes on you, but then, how do you fall down? Experience happiness in devotional service. Okay, good. Yeah. You forget Krishna, forget the Yeah, you forget Krishna when you're depressed. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, all these answers are correct. But I think, you know, any answer, you see, any answer you think, it should be connected to Krishna, no? First answer is that. What is, never become depressed. You know why? Because you, when you become depressed, then who becomes depressed? Krishna. He feels sad, no? He has to think about you. My God, my devotee is depressed. What happened to him, no? He's a person. He's not light. He's a person. We have to always remember he's a person. And he's a person right there with us. He's not there. Mm-hmm. Far off, and we have nothing to do, and he's like a father, no? Pita, um, sort of what's that verse? So when child becomes unhappy, parents become unhappy, no? What happened to my child? You know? So we don't become repressed because it makes Krishna depressed. It makes Krishna think about us, and that's a disservice. So devotees should never become depressed. That is our service to never become depressed. You understand? We have a service to chant Hare Krishna, but this is also a service. Hare Krishna is the best service, the supreme service. But then there are other services also, no? Prabhupada says, satisfy Krishna in all respects. All services. So we understand um, cleaning is service, cooking is service. But there is this service also, never be depressed. So whenever you are depressed, just get out, get that out of you. No. It is not like by Krishna. Forget it. Then you will be able to overcome depression. If you think it is not like by Krishna, then you will be able to come over out of it, no? All other reasons are valid, but you will not be able to overcome depression if this reason is not there. Because why should I leave depression, no? That's a question. I'm depressed. Why shouldn't I be depressed? Come on, I'm depressed. You know, everybody's shouting on me. You think I should be happy? <laughs> No, you see, in mind will try to tell you, this is the situation to be depressed, this is nonsense, you know, and uh, people asking me to be happy, that's nonsense. So if somebody's slapping me, I should not be depressed. <laughs> They're doing politics, and I'm going to get out of the temple, it's a very depressed situation. So, we are not like psycho person, no. It's a depressing situation, and you have to laugh. Ah, no, <laughs> but that's a, there has to be a valid reason. Why, in spite of all depressing situations around us, we are not depressed? Why? Because Krishna doesn't like and that, that will not allow us to, to depress because we are servants of Krishna. We don't want, we might be depressed, we might be happy, it doesn't matter. But for us, what matters? Krishna matters, no? If he is depressed, then, then no, okay, fine. I'll forget it. Is it? Mm-hmm. Make sense? That's how I work within myself. And never be unenthusiastic. So depression, unenthusiasm is different from depression. Depression is like, yeah, you're depressed, nothing to do. Unenthusiastic is you're doing service, but at the same time you're not that enthusiastic, no? You're doing it for doing sake, that's okay, but you're enthusiastic. You never be unenthusiastic because Maya illusion, the greatest, the greatest, what do I say, weapon of illusion is to make you unenthusiastic. Once that is done, she'll just sit back. And you will make yourself fall down. That's all. We'll, we'll harm ourselves. Once we become unenthusiastic. Never be unenthusiastic. And after, see the point, you know what? 
first five years after first five years of devotion um then you know what you are doing actually you know sixth year you have realization yeah there is krishna and chanting hare krishna hare krishna before that after 10 years good nice after 15 years enthusiasm will come down every day same you know same samsara do same chanting same prasad same book distribution what's happening <laughs> it happens after 20 years you will think well that's okay i don't want to go back to god at this life enough next life we'll see it's too much you know we have done too much and 25 years you leave everything and okay fine that's happening that's happening you see it's happening many many senior devotees they don't chant you know this many proper disciples now they don't chant but anyway we have to maintain enthusiasm till our last breath this is a fight no fight against illusion in a fight you can't be an enthusiastic as soon as you are enthusiastic you are gone they'll sh- she'll shoot you no <laughs> you're shot you're dead that's all so never be an enthusiastic if you, if you if you feel lacking an enthusiasm associate with enthusiastic devotee is immediately immediately cure that don't let that disease cripple you that's a disease an enthusiasm don't let that disease cripple you was it will come it will come these are all weapons of maya it will come it will come okay uh, and how to maintain an enthusiasm there's one trick either with devotees but always we're not with devotees no how should do develop spiritual intelligence now what is spiritual intelligence anybody what's that spiritual perception spiritual intelligence what's that proper discrimination okay good discrimination in what spirit and matter okay good can you uh, refine your what spirit and matter can you refine your statement um, you, you're right say, i um, accepting favorable things to spiritual life rejecting okay good yeah yeah, yeah. prabhupa says this in bhagavad gita spiritual intelligence is discrimination between spirit and matter discrimination between uh, what is sense gratification and what is service mm. that's a practical no spirit matter okay that theoretical answer practical is what is sense gratification and what is service it's very important because we tend to get confused this is we think that service but perhaps we are doing sense gratification no it it's very easy to get fooled by illusion so that discrimination that spiritual intelligence we have to develop we have to train our mind to discriminate between what is sense gratification and what is service in the name of sense service we should not gratify our senses that's the idea and how to do that how, how to develop this spiritual intelligence by austerity be austere by austerity you learn this you can't just learn theoretically no what is sense gratification what is service gross things we can learn okay no illicit sex no meditating but subtle things just like i'll give you example this is a like extreme example but it is bhakti sandar sarasri thakur he came one devotee you know he was he was sitting like this wall he came and he said you are doing illicit sex <laughs> uh-huh. and then what <laughs> and he told see you this is prakriti this prakriti and you are taking rest support of prakriti you are taking support of a female that's sex illicit sex that's quite far out example <laughs> that's like quite far out so anyway got the idea you get the idea that sometimes we don't understand that we are doing sense gratification we might not even think about that it might seem so silly you know but we are but we get involved slowly small things matter 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 and then and then you get habit of taking support that goes in subconscious mind and then finally we need support of a female so that's why all all spiritual people they have to be austere isn't it austerities and the austerities what you can do according to your body is it it differs from everybody i mean everybody is not same no so whatever you can do maximum you can do try to be austere uh, but don't harm your health 
in the health topic i'll talk give a health give you as a healthy book distribution preaching at the same time be austere if you have this concept of austerity if you don't have this concept of austerity then we'll be just doing anything we want and we you know we become understanding so little bit austere yeah. be clean that's bhagavatam bhagavatam actually predicts in kali yuga brahmacharis will be unclean <laughs> you read this 12th canto <laughs> it predicts predicts they'll be unclean so please be cleanliness all vaishnav sampradaya they say <laughs> major cause of fall down of a brahmachari is uncleanliness Whoa. yeah one of the major cause because uncleanliness attracts ghosts mm. yeah and then you possessed by you are possessed by possession yeah. possession exorcism or whatever christianity <laughs> but uh, it happens you know uh, it is in all bhagavatam it is said krishna says wherever wherever there is uncleanliness you go there and that's a home so all certain entities they come and then they come in a mind a mind get disturbed unnecessarily be clean be clean as much as you can it's very important cleanliness also means uh, it means cleanliness dust and all these things clothes should be clean at the same time cleanliness also means uh, uh, what do we say keeping things at the place where they are no mm-hmm. that's also cleanliness that generally doesn't happen in brahmacharya life we take our clothes throw here you know the line there hold there it happens here yeah? <laughs> india it's it's a bad thing every anyway from chari life we do something keep something something so no 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 keep whatever things are there uh, wash your hands after they are like you eat the small small things you have to take care if your hand is jhuta ju- you know jhoot what is uh jhuta means what uh, muchi yeah, muchi muchi if your hands are muchi if you eat something and if you don't if you don't do uh, if you don't wash your mouth wash your hands and you muchi and then uh, subtle entities can enter you that's that's there in bhagavatam that's there in bhagavatam you have to be very careful of all these things small things how much you can uh, you have to be practical i mean to say it's not like if you're on a plane and you take something and you muchi you know, and then you're shouting you know where's what <laughs> so be practical <laughs> at the same time yeah water is not allowed in in airport no it's not allowed inside big bottle you can bring a little spray bottle you can bring mm-hmm. yeah i don't know But, so yeah take care of that it's I very wish. important okay be clean and uh, be disciplined discipline is brahmachari that's all there is no other statement besides this discipline is celibacy to keep in mind if you're not disciplined you can't be celibate it's impossible discipline in your eating in your sleeping you know doing at least eating sleeping should be disciplined other things okay fine other things you know hustle bustle life is gone you know discipline but your sadhana in morning eating and sleeping these three things should be disciplined if you miss them you're gone it's difficult so uh, yeah okay and read philosophy and past times as well don't just keep on reading philosophy that is very important from your life because everybody needs some some relishment no will fall down just philosophy will not will not take you so daily <coughs> prabhu said all devotees should read krishna book daily isn't it papa said no papa this genius absolute genius he knew how to train people our devotees are not reading they were like oh, papa said okay krishna oh, i don't have time there's a reason for that because if you don't read past times of krishna you don't get relishment and brahmacharya life you don't get relishment in krishna consciousness you're gone you can't do we can't push up pull ourselves it's impossible you have to get bliss in a heart so read past times now what books to read for past times simple you don't have to read govind lila amrit or krishna ahne komadi or like no no read prabhat books krishna book perfect enough bhagavatam 10th canto chatane charte mata all past times you can read those again and again again and again again and again and it's beautiful beautiful 
So yeah, philosophy plus because generally in preaching, you know what happens. We are all full time devotees. We preach. We for preaching you have to read philosophy. We are not supposed to preach past time. No. So you spend up time reading philosophy, then telling philosophy, and then you have this much time, and then you come and read one verse philosophy, and then finished. No past time. So you lose this thing, and then it becomes mechanical. It becomes so dry, and we can't pull. So nev- always, at least before sleeping, you can. Prabhupada says before sleeping. Read Krishna book half an hour. That you can do. I do that. I always make it a point to read some past times. It's nice. So yeah, philosophy plus past times. And the last tip is preach, preach and preach. That's the bottom line. How to remain celibate. You have to preach. Engage yourself in preaching. This is the only thing which can save you finally. Don't let any moment of your time in which you are not preaching. Not preaching. All these things we are doing for preaching, no? We are saving ourselves for preaching, no? We are not saving ourselves for ourselves. And that's illusion. That's illusion. We are saving ourselves for the benefit of the world. And then we advance. Jan sartha kari karo paropkar, no? So, otherwise we are selfish, no? We want to save ourselves. Okay, that's it. No, come on, that's selfishness. For the benefit of word, we want to keep ourselves pure and celibate and you know, no hypocrisy. So, because if we are pure, we can transmit purity. If we are enthusiastic, we can transmit enthusiasm. What we have, we give. What we don't have, we cannot give. Mm-hmm. You can just give lecture. But that's a very different thing. Lecture is different and transmitting enthusiasm and purity is a different thing, isn't it? So, preach, preach, preach. So that's what it's all about. Remaining celibate in mind. Thank you very much for listening. Sure. All these tips. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have a few questions? Yeah, yeah. It's all about questions. Um, One was in regards to... uh, You were talking about setting goals. Yeah. And making plans. Mm -hmm. Personally, sometimes I have some uh, hesitancy Mm -hmm. to do that because I have the experience that sometimes I'll set a goal or make a vow or something. And and you can't do it, yeah. Okay, fine, fine. I understand. Yeah, this is a genuine question, yeah. I should have addressed that. But, yeah, you're right. It happened to me also initially. So make uh, some, what do we say, realistic goals. Mm. That's also important. You're right. Uh, uh, But, yeah, set high goals. High goals and realistic plans. You know, in, uh, in, uh, in, in management it is said, um, what was that? Act locally, think globally. Mm-hmm. You heard that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Act locally, think globally. So that's why I changed goals and plans. Make realistic plans, set high goals. Mm-hmm. Then your confusion will be solved. Mm-hmm. That's how you do. I, I like what Confucius huh? says. Confucius huh, yeah, yeah. says that the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. So... Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Doing the thousand yeah. miles is the goal. Yeah, 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 you're right. And then, yeah, right. okay, each step, yeah. Each you're right, yeah. It's the same. This is a good saying, yeah. And if you don't set a high goal, you, you may never reach your goal, but if you don't set the goal, you'll never... Then you even don't take a step, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, that's a good question. I'll add there in my... This thing. Any? Okay, fine. Yeah, I have a few more. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe I'll just ask mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you were also talking about being staying busy, yeah, and how it's really important to do uh, because uh, oh, to stay absorbed, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. absorbed. Um, so how to balance that with? Like, oh, balance is uh, a different topic. <laughs> That's <laughs> a question. Topic. Yeah, I didn't discuss. It's a big topic. Okay. I'll talk on that. It seems like sometimes we get so Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is the number one problem in full-time life. <laughs> I'll talk about that. Okay. okay. Mm. Um, oh, really? Um, I just have a few more. Yeah, yeah. So one was uh, for enthusiasm. So another measure. Yeah. Um, 
So, could you clarify what is, like, does enthusiasm, sometimes it seems like some people think that enthusiasm means, like, you have to be, like, jumping up and down. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, could you just yeah. explain like, what is... Enthusiasm to fulfill your goals. Enthusiasm is always in relation to your goal. You can jump, you cannot jump, you can do whatever, you can do very seriously also, but you, you should be going towards your goal at every moment. Then it is enthusiastic. Otherwise we are like monkeys, no? <laughs> Prabhupada said, don't be like a monkey. Prabhupada was super enthusiastic, but you see him, okay. But That's... So you mean like being, feeling, staying inspired? Yeah, stay inspired to fulfill your goals. Mm-hmm. Goal matters. If Arjuna is super inspired, but he doesn't win, what's the point? You know? So his goal is clear. You have to fight and win. And for that you are inspired. If there's no goal, why to get inspired? No, no, why at all? That's the point. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then in relation to uh, being austere, um, sometimes, maybe this goes along with the topic of balance, but um, sometimes the tendency can be to be so austere that we become like hard hearted. Okay. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can, you can. So, what's the question then? So, I guess. Um, I don't know how to, you know, take on austerity. Okay, fine. I understand the question. If you're austere, not in service of God, then it makes your heart hard. Mm-hmm. But if you're austere to serve Krishna, it'll never lead to your heart to become hard. It'll actually make your heart more softened because you get love. Mm-hmm. So unnecessary austerities will make your heart hard. Mm-hmm. So we have to be austere to fulfill, to to accomplish that service, not unnecessarily, then things will get okay. That's all. That reminds me of one point Mother Nidra was saying that when we're doing things, we have to always remind ourselves that we're doing it for Krishna. Yeah. We do austerity, we're doing it for Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. I have this conversation. Or, yeah. 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 With Keshava Bharati Maharaj before his last visit. And he pointed me to um, the portion on austerity in, in Gita 17. Seven, 17. 17 chapter? Yeah, 17 yeah, yeah. chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 12, 13, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of ignorance, austerities. Yeah. yeah. And talking about austerity, in the mode of goodness, austerity of mind, austerity of body. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Uh, that was extremely helpful because I came from a background that was way austere, like austere to the point of not really being good for health. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. Things. Mortification. Yeah. Um, it's Christianity. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, that's a tip. Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> I have a question related to the part, never be depressed. Yeah. And um, it was a great point. Krishna doesn't like us when we're depressed. Um, my question is, what is the difference between uh, the feelings of depression and the feelings of feeling oneself unqualified, feeling oneself fallen? We see that reading some of the literature, oh. we understand advanced well, I, devotees feel I, very I, I got your point, yeah. almost seeming depressed. Okay, fine, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. It, there's a difference, there's a difference that depression, uh, Krishna says to Uddhav, in Bhagavatam, depression and feeling, what acharyas are feeling, depression will hamper your service. Mm-hmm. But those feelings will inspire your service. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like Gopinath, Mama Nevedana, so no? mm-hmm. I'm nothing Krishna, I'm this. So that will enthuse you to serve God more. Mm-hmm. But depression will like, okay, I'm not going for Mangal Arati. <laughs> <laughs> That's a <the> difference. <laughs> yeah. It's a good question. Mm-hmm. I'd so, like you to com- comment a little bit more if you could on. I'm sorry. Yeah, you have to. That's it, yeah. You have to ask something? It's no. finished? It's done. Okay. 
uh, to comment a little bit more on um, goal setting and planning and staying busy in those plans as, yeah. well as it relates to health because you mentioned health. I'll discuss again. I'll discuss a big topic, health. Yeah, I have to discuss. Next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whenever we have class, we'll discuss. I, I wanted to make a comment, though, too. Mm -hmm. is it, and that is that um, on the whole idea of disturbance, don't be disturbed by disturbance. Mm -hmm. They can even start with just the simple things like um, learning how to uh, uh, noise in the background, you know, these kinds of things. You feel hot, you feel cold. Oh, that thing, okay. Clouds come, clouds Yeah, come. yeah, yeah, Krishna says tolerate, yeah. All right. But, uh, but why I didn't mention that point? Because I'm, I'm mentioning celibacy in mind. Yes. So that's concerned with body. So yes, that's yes. okay. It starts by that. You're right. But I was just mentioning like other kind of disturbances, especially relating to brahmachari, mm -hmm. lust and all those things. Mm -hmm. That's what I was talking in this context. Yes. So, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Mind thinks so many stupid things. Yeah, let her think. Let him think. You're not mind. You think about what nonsense you want. That's okay. We don't care about you. Finish. As what Prabhupada says, learn the best way to deal with the mind is neglect. Yeah. <laughs> Rafa said that. You're right. <laughs> when I read that, I got that point. This is perfect. Mm -hmm. Neglected, that's all. Do you have a quotation for that? Yeah. Uh, recently, maybe. Where? Second can? Eighth? Eighth candle, Can you please find that and give it to me? I'll try my best. Okay, fine. I'll just keep it. Keep that. In one of the Essene Gospels, when Jesus says about those mental disturbances, cloud, clouds come, clouds go. Oh, okay. Clouds come, clouds go. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, same thing, yeah. So we are talking the same thing, yeah. So it confirms, you know, all traditions speak like that. At least that's my realization also. And scriptures say same Christianity. And so we are confirmed. Okay, so what else? It's done. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, as someone who's pretty new... Some of us? As someone that's pretty new mm -hmm. to this... Ashram and mm. Rosary, mm. Um, I'm my mind is really like scattered. Everybody's yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. okay. So I was thinking, um, is it is it important for me still to make plans and and set goals, even at this stage, or should I be focused more on just plugging in and becoming fixed in devotional service? No, so that's a goal. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. You should. Thanks so much. Okay, so. Thank you. Um, one more thing. Yeah. I don't know if it's a question, but just kind of overviewing this whole uh, systematic you know, plan here uh, for Ramachari Life, it's really about having an emotional attachment to. Service and yeah, of course. Of course, you're right. Uh, but it comes by this practice. Because emotions you can't uh, artificially, you know. Uh, people can talk about emotions. That's perfect. But how to get that platform? So always, if you see Prabhupada's books, Prabhupada is not talking about emotions much, no. He's always talking practical things. Follow rules, serve, tuck, 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 tuck. Why? Because he knows if you do this, you get to that platform. So, he, Prabhupada is a practical man. So, this is some practical things and he will achieve that platform. That's why I read philosophy and pastimes. In the end, it helps you to develop emotions. And all these things, all these tips, what are these? In one hand, you are nurturing emotions. On another hand, you are protecting your emotions. Now. Mm. Emotions is like a baby you now. So, feeling, tender feeling. So, all these things will help you to protect your emotions and nourish them. If you become depressed, your emotions get blocked, no? So you don't get depressed. It protects your emotions. Reading pastimes nourishes your emotions. Preaching nourishes your emotions. And then you get feelings and emotions. And so, so there's some practical plan. People can follow. Anybody can follow this, no? If we say, uh, if, if we don't say all these things, fine. If we say you become, have emotions for Krishna, become attached, 
Now what to do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't have that. Thinking, feeling, willing. Thinking is in our control. Willing, actions in our control. Feelings are not in our control. They are out of our... We can't do anything with that. So thinking and actions, they protect feeling and then they, that's karma yoga, jnana yoga and bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is in the middle, no? Karma yoga, jnana yoga. So karma yoga, jnana yoga, they act as a protector of bhakti. Help it. That's how Prabhupada explains Bhagavad Gita. That's what very much this practical things. I'm, I, probably I'll write a book on this small book it's a good uh, it was helpful or like yes, okay very, mm-hmm. that's fine inspiring yeah inspiring yeah I wanted to use this word <laughs> okay so uh, we'll then um, you you tell me I've just I finished this topic remaining celibate in mind four topics are there health chanting leadership and service and balance mm-hmm. you tell me whenever you have time we can spend probably half an hour to 40 minutes. That's all. Um, each of those? Each of those. Short and s- small and sweet we'll keep. Mm-hmm. And then you can uh, uh, then you can keep on chewing this and expanding this in your mind. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>